Hi, my name's Dan Keen. Welcome. Come in, sit down, preferably not too near me because I'm so hot and sweaty at the moment. The humidity in this room, if it hadn't been for the moisture that I've added to the air through my every orifice, um, is very high, it's very hot, and these lights are warm. Welcome. Uh, there's been quite a few of you joining the channel since my Spitfire video went live, and I realise I haven't actually spoken about that on the channel yet. For those of you who don't know, uh, I recently did a video for Spitfire Audio where I talked about the BBC Symphony Orchestra Library. They very kindly asked me to do a demo of their product for their product page, and then they asked me if I'd like to make a video about the kind of creative process. And I've had about 500 of you over the last month join me here on my channel, so welcome everybody. Today we're going to be talking about something that you might not have seen about because it was so long ago, but about six weeks ago to the day of recording, um, I said I was going to make this thing called the BLM Piano Toolkit. Um, and basically I wanted to make an instrument for the Black Lives Matter movement, it's something that I care a lot about, and around the time of George Floyd's death, you know, I was thinking what can I do to raise some funds, and really the only thing I can do is music, music based things. Now, I've been making instruments on pianobook.co.uk for a long time. Haven't actually made any recently um, because I've been busy with other things, but I was really excited to get back to this project and I thought that creating a piano toolkit would be a good way to do it. Now, it is now live. For $18, you can go to the link down below, Dave Hillowitz, which if you're watching Dave, thank you so much for all of your help with the contact scripting and stuff like that. He was an absolute mastermind when it came to taking my kind of vision for this thing and making it happen. So I'm really, really grateful to you, Dave, if you're watching. Um, I'm pretty sure he is. So this piano toolkit is basically in three parts. Um, and I hope it's not crass to have used the letters from BLM to spell out something different. But I've got my bright, my looped and my muted sounds. Basically, I wanted to create a toolkit that does everything, everything you could ever want. And this is capturing my upright piano, which is downstairs in my living room. I've had it for about 10 years. Um, and it's about 100 years old. It was produced in Paris in the 1920s. It's a really characterful sound. And the particular character from it is that it's so bright. So actually, for the bright samples, I didn't have to do too much to bring out those sort of high frequencies. Whereas on the muted side of things, I took a bit of inspiration from the lab's piano and the kind of the general vibe that media music tends to take these days, which is to put a piece of felt, put it in front of the, uh, between the hammers and the strings, and you get this really, really nice sort of muted, almost thuddy sound. And so I did that for this as well. Finally, for the loops, um, I actually used the samples to create some loops, and the, I'll show you why I've done it in that way uh, in a few minutes. So I thought the best thing to do to celebrate it being out is just to show you what this library can do. Um, it's taken a very long time, as you can imagine, because of coronavirus, because of the pandemic, we are still in lockdown, and so all of this had to be recorded very late at night. Um, I don't think you can hear the morning chorus, but you know, sitting at two or three in the morning, playing a note and then just sort of waiting for it to die out. It's a very lonely, solitary existence sampling an instrument. So if you purchase the BLM Piano Toolkit, you're going to get these files right out of the box. Now, as I say, I'm going to do more videos over the next few days. Specifically, I'm going to show you how to make your own loops in a video possibly next week. But this, I'm going to start with the bright. This is sort of what I would say is the most true to what the piano really sounds like. So you can hear the really authentic uh, sound of the pedal there. I decided to leave it with squeaks, but you might want to turn it down there. And so this is really nice. You've got a few different controls here. If we just go from uh, left to right, we've got the notes, that's the actual samples themselves. We've got the release triggers, the sounds of the notes being lifted up. Then we've got the pedal noise, as I say. And then this is like a global volume switch, which is not actually connected to this volume slider, which gives you a little bit more control. And then this is sort of like a high cut filter. So this is everything kind of fully open. But if you just want to take away some of that kind of harshness on the top, you can sort of do it like that. You don't have to be pulling up EQs and things like that. Now there is a reverb built in. Um, and if I show you what that looks like, it's this concert hall A um, built into contact. Uh, and so I tend to have it around here, and I've also got a couple of other reverbs loaded. If I turn all of this off, you can get a feel for what it actually sounds like in the room. Mm -hmm. 
Now I did my best to tune this piano before I recorded it, um, but because it is about 100 years old, the tuning does tend to waver, so it sounds best really in the upper frequencies, the upper registers. And you can hear that it's got a real kind of bitey sound to it. But then also nice and quiet as well. So with this, if we go into the sort of expert view here, you can see that we've got pedal up and pedal down samples, um, and we've got three round robins of each. I thought I'd do four round robins, but then I wondered, would it be better to have an extra round robin or an extra velocity layer? So instead, I ended up going for a fourth uh, velocity layer. In total, I actually think four is absolutely fine for this piano. I don't find myself wanting it to be any louder or any quieter. Um, the main difficulty really was just trying to match things so that as it gets louder, you don't notice, especially that it goes through the various um, different dynamics. But they're all here for you to see uh, if you so choose. And you can see here that each of the notes and the uh, release triggers and the pedals, they're all on, uh, on different buses. So that's why we can have that degree of control there over the group volumes. So I think this piano is going to work really, really well just to cut through a mix. Um, if you've got like a small ensemble or if you've just got something where there's lots of low end happening, I think it's going to cut through really nicely. Now I use two sets of reverb. Um, I use a longer one and a shorter one. These are both Quantum Leap Spaces by East West. Um, th these aren't the ones that I necessarily normally use, but I would recommend blending. If you've got a long convolution reverb built in, I'd recommend pulling up something small. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, um, but just to help kind of give it that early reflection. The reason I tend to use two sets of reverb is that I find if you've got something that's got a lot of pre-delay to it, there's a bit of a hole between the dry sound and the very, very wet sound. So I like just to put a small sort of studio reverb in the middle to help kind of bridge that gap um, between the sort of early reflection and then the kind of the further reflections. Um, let's move on now to the muted sounds. As I said before, this had a piece of felt between the hammers and the strings, so it's a much thuddier, warmer sound. Same adorable pedal noise. And with this, I wanted to capture as much of the warmth as possible, so it sounds particularly nice in the lower registers. So I think this is going to work really, really well for drama. And I find myself playing felt pianos more and more these days. I don't know why. They just seem to really work in drama. So um, I think this is going to be an absolute steal. And to be honest, this is what I would say is worth the price of entry alone um, because it's just got such a character to it um, that, I, that I really, really like. Now, you might have noticed that I was actually playing the keys pretty hard. And I found that when I was recording this, I often had to re-record notes because the note just wasn't really activating. If you imagine when you've got a barrier between the hammer and the strings, sometimes it just needs a little bit more to cut through. So as a result, I've only recorded three velocity layers. Um, the quietest layers really are quiet. Just just hitting the note, particularly with the, um, the pedal up samples. The pedal down's a bit more forgiving. So I found that in general, the felt tends to sort of compress the um, the dynamic range of the piano anyway. So I find myself kind of playing in the upper registers at high velocities just to really kind of cut through. And in that higher velocity, I really was hitting it as hard as I could, but you know, the felt really does kill it. So I hope you like both of those. I'm now gonna move on to the loops, which is a slightly kind of different side of things. This was something that was a bit of a late entry, but what I wanted to do was create a set of pads that could be sort of instantly playable, instantly inspiring. And so I've created two main layers. If I show you that first, 
basically I've taken samples from the uh, bright sound and the muted sound and I've turned it into two velocity layers. Now I was thinking about writing these and then actually physically recording them but I'm quite glad I didn't in the end because it's given me a bit more control and I didn't really know what I wanted to achieve with these pads from the beginning. So I've got these big, big pads here um, that spread over two octaves and so they sort of overlap each other. And basically the quietest layer here is using the very softest samples and then the, the louder layer is using the very loudest ones. And because I've played them exactly the same way with MIDI, um, I've been able to get this nice crossfade when you use the dynamics. So I've got this mapped to the mod wheel at the moment, but you can also just use this, um, just moving it with your mouse if you'd prefer. I've then also got this set to CC11, but also you can learn whichever one you'd like. So really nice and gentle. You'll notice that as the dynamics get louder, it almost feels like the piano is sort of opening out. And I was quite particular in the way that I set out the, with the production here. So I wanted to make it feel like the kind of the panning was getting wider, the stereo image was sort of widening a little bit. Now you can also use the tone knob here to create a degree of control as well. And I've got this mapped just now to CC21 because this is the middle fader on my, on my keyboard. Um, but if I play all of these together, you'll hear how it sounds. So you can hear there that right at the very bottom, it almost feels like sort of little things under the surface. I mean, this is really kind of thrumming textures at its core. And I guess this is what a thrumming textures piano library would sound like. I'm gonna move on to the other one now, just to give you a little bit more kind of demonstration of how this works. So really, really gentle, it sort of feels like it's being drawn out of the piano. This one, I really wanted to focus on the kind of the transience of the actual sound of my finger hitting the keys, which is quite, quite an emotive sound, I think. Then this one's a bit more creative, it's sort of using slow drawn out pads underneath. And finally, Thank you so much for watching. It really does mean a lot to me that you're all here. We're nearly at 2,000 subscribers, can you believe it? Um, one thing to say is I do plan on doing more libraries like this. Um, I'll, I'm still gonna continue to do the piano book stuff, but let me know if this slightly deeper sampled uh, stuff is of interest to you. I don't have e-commerce set up on my website yet, so there's a lot to explore with that, but if it's of potential interest to you, I might try and do one a month or one every other month or something like that. Stay well, stay safe, and um, I'll see you soon.